but ha and I don't mean to be insulting, but having been around a bit, my hunch is that you're going to get fucked because I've seen you get fucked a lot and I've never seen Logan get fucked once. So I started watching Succession a little over a year ago and it started as a, yeah, I'll watch an episode a night and slowly get through it type thing to, okay, let's watch two episodes a night. And then it escalated to me watching as many episodes as I could before it was a detriment to my sleep schedule. And I finished the first three seasons incredibly fast. Each season surpassed the last one and this final season was no different. Each episode shocked me, perplexed me, left me wanting more to the point where I thought to myself, how the fuck are they gonna end this? Well, Succession ended this past Sunday, and I'm at a loss for words. There is so much to unpack, and I can't possibly do all of it right now, but I do want to make an attempt at expressing how perfectly upsetting this finale is. The fun of watching Succession, a show about fictional awful people who are based on real-life awful people, is not just the enjoyment of hearing the silver tongue of every character, except for Greg, obviously. Uh, if it is to be said, so it be, so it is. Are you all right? But it's watching these, again, awful people doing awful things, learning their trauma, seeing their vulnerability, being fed hope that they are going to overcome those obstacles to become better people. But when push comes to shove, they fall back on their defense mechanisms, self-sabotage, and take two steps back after taking one step forward. In that process, they show you that your first impression of them is not just a front to hide their humanity. It is who they really are. It's almost like a snake eating itself, and that's what this finale did so well. We've seen that evolution with Roman's character, who started out as a quippy incel who obviously has some intimacy issues and has a disdain for not just everyone around him, but poor people, minorities, and the like. I do think you are so brave for picking the brown man. I think that we should get you a medal, Amazing. a special medal for white racist. women who like being a racist now. And he's still all of those things, but this budding neo-Nazi was harmless. You better be smelling your fucking armpit, Romulus. You see how much of a fail son he is that once his harmlessness rears its ugly head in the election episode, you realize that it can happen just like that at the snap of a finger. When you see someone who routinely shows you who he is and that person is given immense power, what he does is not gonna shock you, but it is really infuriating, especially in a show that has been humanizing this character who has been so abrasively awful. Fuck you, man. Oh. And that dichotomy is what makes this show so good. But this is Roman Roy we're talking about here, and as quickly as he obtained that power, he lost it. Not because of a bad business move or anything, but because he committed the crime of publicly crying at his own father's funeral, and he couldn't finish the speech that would have made him a made man after delaying his grief until his body couldn't take it anymore. Shiv does the same thing, but it's more tragic, I think, on multiple levels. She's an outsider from Kendall and Roman, in terms of the hunt for the crown, and she's had no experience in the family business. Instead, she wanted to become her own woman in the world of politics, but in the back of her head, she's always wanted the same thing that Kendall and Roman do. Why did you never ask me, huh? I would kill this. I'd fucking destroy it. So much so that just like Kendall in previous seasons, she betrayed her brothers in the pursuit of it. She seems like the most normal and agreeable sibling and the obvious sexism and misogyny that permeates this space adds to another layer of her relatability, but she wants to dominate everyone in the same way her father did. She married Tom because she was afraid of being with someone who challenged her. I'm just not sure I'm a good fit for a monogamous marriage. Right and whenever someone challenges her, she does her best the Logan impression and walks away. She walked away from the family business to go into politics. She did the same thing to Gil. She did the same thing to Tom multiple times. She retreats to being absent in the same way that she perceived her mother did to her. Me, attention from you? Oh no. That ship sailed long ago. Which is kind of a mindfuck because, in my opinion, I think all the stuff that I just mentioned felt like she was trying to avoid becoming her mother, just being a CEO's wife and just being a mom. But that's exactly where she ended up. Shiv using the same self-defense mechanism to avoid becoming her mother made her become her mother, which is a self-fulfilling prophecy and that's sort of what happens to every character in this show. I don't think I've ever won a single battle 
in my whole life. Sure, she's closer to the throne than Kendall and Roman ever will be again, but she'll always be just that, within arm's reach. But why did she do that? Because it wasn't something that happened to her, like in her mother's case. She was the deciding vote to take the Gojo deal. She could have screwed over Matson, and she could have screwed over Tom for betraying her again. And the Roy siblings seem to have bonded the previous night, which was one of the less than a handful of times this show has provided a genuinely heartwarming moment. And I think I can speak for most people, hopefully, and say that that moment in itself was more affecting than any of the previous glimpses of hope that we've seen. They even played the succession theme after they came back from Barbados, but with a more triumphant interpolation of it, to give you this feeling that they were finally overcoming Logan's traumatic parenting together, and they were going to succeed together. But again, that's not the nature of this trio. Shiv has always been envious of her brothers, not because they're more competent than her, but because of how she's treated in comparison to them. Whenever they've tried to make this trio thing work, she was always politicked out of being anywhere near the top of the totem pole. Kendall and Roman were given unlimited chances to run the company, and she was always pushed out. So if she can't have it, then none of them can. I take over, and we just, you know, you two, under me, co-presidents. Under you. Uh -huh. Guess who Kendall thinks it should be? It's gonna blow your fucking mind. And that's also how she approaches her relationship with Tom. Does she love Tom? I don't think so, but who knows? Who cares? There's no love in this environment. There can't be. Shiv doesn't love anyone, and none of them do. These people repeatedly say things like, I love you, but, or I'm doing this for my family, followed by the worst possible thing they can say, and in defense of the worst possible thing they can do. Any semblance of love Shiv, Roman, and Kendall felt died with Logan. Also, going back to season one, this outcome is what Shiv and Tom always wanted. If if you remember, this was their original plan, to have Tom succeed Logan while Shiv pursues her ambitions outside the family business. Or do we ask? Do we just ask? Do we accelerate the plan? You know, could I consider the big trousers? Did Shiv mean it at the time that she agreed to this plan? Fuck no. But she kept it open as an option, just like she played both sides of this season with her brothers and Matson. When she knew that Matson picked up Tom and Kendall was the alternative, she picked the option she thinks she can control. But she can't. She can't control Tom because Tom doesn't love her either. They can pretend they can move on knowing the terrible things they've said and done to each other, but they're together out of utility and they both know that now. I think you are incapable of love, and I think you are maybe not a good person to have children. Truth is, I probably should never have had children. Any time that Kendall, Shiv, Roman, or even Connor have turned to their siblings, it has been out of self-interest. Purely self-interest. Because you can read into the things that they say, but it's the things that they do that count. And when they're out of Logan's good graces, when they start losing in the game, they turn to each other. The trio thing becomes a thing again, and we get those glimmers of hope, but then they turn on each other again. The whole Roy clan has all the money in the world, even more now than they did when Logan was alive. But that's not enough because it was never about the money. It's about status and all that that implies. Your whole business model is, uh, is based on seducing presidents. You're a really high class hooker. No offense. The Roys are products of nepotism at the highest order, and they were groomed to feel that the crown was owed to them. Not to all three of them, but to them individually. But Tom is the titular successor in the end. It was insane watching it unfold, but it makes sense. Not because this is secretly a tale of meritocracy, and Tom worked really hard, and the Roys didn't work hard enough. The world sucks even for rich people. The world is unjust, but it's in part because the capitalist workspace is not a meritocracy. Your boss wants subservient workers. That's what Madsen wants, and that's what Logan wanted. Congratulations, Tom. I hear you swallowed your own load. Yeah, I did. Roman didn't want to do the training program he was asked to do? Well, he's not going to be taken seriously. Kendall didn't want to wait his turn. He suffers the same fate. Shiv kept trying to keep her options open, and the same thing happened to her. But Tom, he ate shit and did exactly what he was told. He went to cruises and covered up all the crimes that the company had knowledge of. He almost went to jail in service of the family, and he betrayed his own wife to get closer to Logan. He took Madsen's verbal jabs throughout this season in stride, and even took the ultimate 
ultimate shit test and said it was totally fine that Matson expressed his desire to fuck Shiv. But not just his desire to fuck Shiv, but he added that Shiv would want to fuck him too. Is this making you uncomfortable? I'm sorry if it's weird. Or... No, no, we're men. Yeah. And again, Tom nodded his head and appeased the new king because he's a cuck and that's his true nature. Although he has the spot Shiv, Roman, and Kendall wanted, he loses too. Tom in this pursuit has taken a big part in ruining his marriage and he will never become his own man. As long as he feels like he needs to hold this status, the consequence is that he will be in service to a man who openly wants to fuck his wife and probably will. Tom doesn't get to have another original thought either because that's not what Matson wants. He's stuck in this marriage to a pregnant Shiv who he doesn't love anymore, and he's also stuck in a codependent relationship with Greg, who also has knowledge of what went down in cruises, and if he cuts Greg off, he goes to jail for probably the rest of his life. But where Tom ends up is a prison of his own making, and he'll happily lay in his pig pen with all the other hogs. What am I gonna do with a soul anyways? Souls are boring. <laughs> Boo, souls. <laughs> All of this tragedy is most clear with Kendall, who for this whole show is a glass house. He has now obtained billions of dollars, not just billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars from this deal with Gojo, but he lost the only thing he wanted, in a more extreme sense than Tom, Kendall actually has nothing. And the final shot of the series is almost a sad reflection of episode two of this season, where Logan has a scene with Colin where he basically confides in him about mortality. Because Logan is alone, and his bodyguard is his only friend. And Logan reached that state at the end of his life, and Kendall is in the middle of his life, and he's already at the end. And going back to this idea of having these characters come full circle and screwing themselves by showing their true colors, I think it's poetic that Kendall's first loss in his pursuit of the throne takes place in the same exact room as the climax of the series. Succession, as its title suggests, is inevitable. And in the context of a tragedy, this inevitability means that everyone loses except for Logan. Logan wanted to sell Waystar, and he did. He chose the next president, and he won. One of the last things he said to his own children was this. I love you, but you are not serious people. And he was right. And if he knew he was going to die soon, he was probably happy to know that he'll never see how right he really was. But there's a glimmer of hope for Roman, of all people. Sure, he fucked the deal with Mencken and lost to Matson, but as his final shot suggests, at least to me, he's free of the burden of trying to gain the approval of someone who's already dead. Look at all this fucking bullshit. We are not bullshit. We are bullshit. You are bullshit. You're fucking bullshit. Man, I'm fucking bullshit. She's bullshit. It's all fucking nothing. 